This is Hong Kong and Beyond, and I'm Shaz. I'm Leon, and today we're taking a look at the new theatrical release from Cine Asia, which is the sparring partner. This is a category three film based on a true life crime in Hong Kong. Before we get into the film, we'll just have a brief look at the actual events and Leon will read the summary from Wikipedia. Right, so please forgive my pronunciations. I don't speak Cantonese or Mandarin, so I'm going to butcher them pretty bad. But we will put the actual names up on the screen so you can see what they really are. Right. Glory Chow and Moon Su were a couple murdered in Tai Kok Choi, Hong Kong, presumably on the 1st of March 2013. The younger son, Henry Chow, who was 28 at the time of the murder, and his friend, Angus Say, who was 35 at the time of the murder, were indicted for the murders, which they initially denied being involved in. During Chow and Say's interviews with the police, they admitted that after the murder, they chopped up the parents' dead bodies and cooked the remains with salt to make them look like barbecued pork. They kept part of the remains in lunch boxes, which they stored in the refrigerator. Oh dear. The gruesome details of the murder sparked a huge amount of media coverage in Hong Kong, as you might well expect. So Shaz and I have actually watched a YouTube video on this, which we will provide a link for. And it was pretty chilling, wasn't it? Really chilling. Yeah. Absolutely horrendous what happened. Yeah, when you see the actual son himself, mm. it's pretty cold. It's um, yeah, very disturbing to watch that video. We do recommend it, especially if you're going to go and see the film. Um, but yeah, this is um, a true life category three film, and I think when you know you portray events that have actually happened, it adds a little bit more impact to the story. Mm -hmm. So this is a really interesting case, a really interesting story, and they have made one really good film out of it. So this. This category free film was um, quite disturbing. How did it make you feel, this film, Chaz? Just completely shocked by what happened, really. Mm -hmm. And then um, I felt really torn with the courtroom proceedings. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Mm. Um, especially, we didn't look up the event until after we'd watched the film. Yes. So we did that because we wanted to go in cold, not knowing anything about it. So which aspects of the film did you enjoy the most, would you say? I think I liked the, the cast. I thought they mm -hmm. were really, really good. Mm -hmm. Everybody seemed to be on point on this one. There was really good performances. And there were some actors that we recognised. You had good old mm -hmm. Michael Chow in there, who we really enjoyed and in between loves when we watched and he was like the prosecutor and um one of the jury members is gloria yip who if you are a regular watcher to our channel you might remember we covered her in saga the phoenix and the peacock king in our well, like blues a while back and they were very good in the roles and yes. the, the people that were new to us were very very good too yeah. and i think the editing on this film was pretty fantastic actually the, mm -hmm. the way they depicted everything. You might be in the courtroom, but then they might be talking about something that happens and then the court is in that scene, what's yeah. happening around them. I, I really like that actually, how, you know, like you say, the, the courtroom or the people in the courtroom were suddenly in another place examining what was going on. Mm. Yeah, I did like that. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty mm. clever way of doing it, wasn't it? Way, yeah. 
I mean, I, I really liked the whole sort of courtroom feel because it was, there was quite a lot of the film in the courtroom. And whereas some people might think that wouldn't be very interesting, it was, it was riveting, wasn't it? It's gripping, very gripping. Mm. So, this question I'd like to ask, if you was going to improve this film, could you, would you? Hmm, I'm not sure I could, to be honest. I'm not sure there was any point I would do differently, to be, to be fair. What about you? The, the son, the actor that played the son, <clears throat> I did like him, I liked him a lot. Mm. And this isn't a criticism, but I would have liked more screen time with him. Mm. I think as he is <laughs> obviously the, the the main part, you know, it's his right. parents that were murdered. I'd like to mm. focus a little bit more on him. What did you think of the soundtrack in the film? It's not a thing. I don't think I have complaints as such, but I can't really remember it. Now we just watched it last night. And I don't know whether that's a good thing or not, because it might have just, it might have, I might have just relaxed into it and let it mm. wash over me. And but there was, I couldn't hum it to you afterwards. There could have been music. Maybe there wasn't any. Maybe that's why I didn't notice any. Maybe we were both too absorbed. I think we were too absorbed <laughs> to even notice. <laughs> so the photography in this film, how well do you think this this movie was shot? really well actually. No. There, there was some well thought out camera angles and, and glitch, you know, what about you? The angles they took, the, the backgrounds, the, sometimes they have shadows it, which are really good in the courtroom mm. and they might have like light across somebody's eyes to make yes. that yes. stand out. Yeah. It all amplified the mood yeah. of the film and, and made it, you know, hit home a little bit more. So. This was really well planned and it looks great. It looks a million dollars, this film. So performance wise in this, it was mm. it was hard to pick. I thought Henry Henry Chung's character, who was played by Young Wai Lun, I thought that mm. guy was pretty good. And like I said, yeah. I would have liked more, but a bit more of him. What do you think mm. about some of the others that, you know, and let's conclude by saying who your favourite was as well. I thought, like you say, everyone, especially like in the courtroom scene, I think all of like the barristers were very good, mm -hmm. um, gave really strong performances, and also um, Angus, the actor that played him, I thought he gave a really strong performance as well. So he was called Mike Boitung, mm -hmm. probably getting that wrong, but yeah, he was very good. Yes. He, um, yeah, he was very convincing in his role and yeah. he made you very unsure of the truth mm. of events mm. and what was going on. And uh, yeah, the, the defence, there was two defence yes. lawyers in there. Yeah. We had um, Jan Lam, who was Henry's defence. Yes. Yeah, and I thought he was quite good. Yeah, he was really strong, I thought, in playing a defence barrister. Yeah, yeah, he was really good. Mm. I was particularly impressed with So Yuk Wa, who was um, Angus's defence. Yes, again, I, brilliant. I've not seen her before, mm. but no. she really leapt off the screen. I mean, it mm. made me interested. I thought, oh, I want to see more of hers. Mm. But I'm going to have to go old school and say I liked Michael Chow the best. I've not seen him in a role like this. And I was just really pleased. I was really chuffed to see him play this sort of rock role, you know? As the prosecutor, I thought he was very, yeah, very good. Yeah. Yeah. You know? What about you, if you have to pick one? Um, it would be Angus, the yeah. actor that played Angus, who was Mac Poitong. Yeah, great. Oh, that's good. And this film is a first time director. Yeah, that's pretty amazing if this was his first direction yeah. job because it, it was brilliant. We want you guys to look him up because he did a good job so I'll put his name on screen now. Is there any other words that you have on the film that you know any um, afterthoughts that? Yeah well, I think as we were watching it um it just put, put me in mind of a film called is it 12 Angry Men? Or oh, Henry uh, Fonda film. Yeah mm. yeah because you know this one was different um but it just made me think about, you know, how the, the jury discuss things and how people have got different points of view and just how interesting it is yeah. focusing on the jury sometimes as well as what's actually going on in the courtroom. 
You're 100% right. I would not be surprised if that film was kind of an influence on this film because we did get quite a lot of the jury talking mm. um, and it really did. Yeah, no, you said it. It really is got a lot of similarities with that film and that film was a cracking film. This is yeah. a cracking film. Yeah. But this is expanded out beyond that and we get the crime as well as the courtroom, yes. Yes. which is a nice mix. Yeah, which gives you a fuller picture of everything. Yeah, and, and for me, you know, I love cat free guys. Um, I'm the cat, cat free crazy. Um, <laughs> and this is a nice like representation of a modern day cat free mm -hmm. film. It might not look it to some people. Some people might think, oh, this is a drama or a thriller. But it does have a lot of the cat free tropes in there. Yes. Uh, notice they played to it a little bit, like the actor that played Henry, he looked a bit more sinister in the movie than what the actual guy did. They mm -hmm. sort, sort, so they have tried to make a little attempts to make him, you know, a bit of a character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you had some of the blood, you had some of the gore. Unfortunately, it's because it actually happened. Yeah, yeah. And we did have a tiny bit of sleaze, a little bit of nudity in there, you know, mm -hmm. which, um, Again, it's bringing with the cat free, it's making it an interesting film, it's putting stuff on screen yeah, that yeah. captures your attention. And I think this is a good direction for it to go, to bring in a new audience and hopefully, mm. you know, the new audience might then go back and look at stuff like Dr. Lamb, Untold yeah. Story, yeah. so on and so forth, you know, Run and Kill, Red to Kill, all those films. I like this film quite a bit. I think I've still got to get a little bit more used to the new way of doing Cat Free. Right, okay. But I did really enjoy it. I'd like a little bit more from the guy that played Henry. So I'm going to give this one a resoundingly good 8 out of 10. That's great. I maybe got a tiny bit more from the film as a whole then because I'm scoring it 9.5 because I just thought it was fantastic. Yeah, you were pretty blown yeah. away, weren't you? I was, yeah. So there you go, folks. That's our scores. If you get a chance to see this, go and see it. So the sparring partner is out in UK cinemas from November the 18th. Um, it's going to be shown at the Showcase Cinemas in Bristol, Leeds, Liverpool, Reading and Southampton. Um, we believe it will be rated 18. Yes, and not surprising. Mm. We'd like to give a great big hearty thank you to Cine Asia. Thank you. And in particular, our friend thank you. Ventris Ma. She's really been looking thank after you. us with sending us these fantastic films to review. And we really do appreciate the opportunity on our little channel here. And uh, thank you to everybody that stuck with us and watched our reviews. And if you made it this far through the video, an extra big thank, thank you. you. If you guys haven't already, please like and subscribe. It really is a great deal to us. We really enjoyed this one. We hope you guys enjoyed it too. And uh, we hope to bring more to you from Cine Asia in the future. Yeah. If uh, anything you'd like to add, um, you've got any comments on the crime or the film itself, please leave us a comment below, or you can email us at hongkongblurays at gmail.com. And uh, that's all from us, Shaz. Yeah. That's all for now. We'll catch you on the next one.